Hey everyone, my name is Sharik and I'm a senior product manager here at Game Analytics. And today I'll be taking you through an introduction of the Explore tool. So the Explore tool is what we call an isolated workbench. It allows you to dive deep into your data and slice and dice your information in a variety of ways. It's great if you want to go in and start creating your own custom queries that you can save and then apply across your portfolio of games. So let's dive into some examples and see what we can do. So before we get into our first example, let's just get our bearings with what's happening here on the screen and what options we have. In the center, I've got a widget showing me my visualization for the metric DAU, daily active users. So I can see very quickly how many active users my game has had over the previous week. Just below that, I've got that same data in a tabular form. And above the visualization, I've got several features such as the ability to change my metric, add filters, and change my aggregation. So let's assume that I'm a studio and I've recently launched my game. It's currently in soft launch and I want to try and understand how my user acquisition is going. Let's take the example that I want to see how many users I've acquired over the previous 30 days who've installed the game in the United States and in a specific version of iOS. So what I want to do first is I want to change my metric. That I can easily do by clicking on the metric picker. I've got a list of categories which each contain their own metrics. Now for this example, I'm looking for the metric new users. So I can go to core metrics, find new users and apply the metric. Now I've got the metric new users loaded for the period of the last week. But as we said, we want to see how our user acquisition is going over the last 30 days. So let's change this to the last 30 days using the date picker. There we go. And now what I want to do is I want to add a filter. So the data that I'm seeing on the screen is restricted for users coming from the United States and from a specific iOS version. So to do this, I'll go to filters and add a filter. Now what I can do is I'm able to add filters from dimensions, events, configs, and cohorts. For this example, I'm looking in dimensions because I know I can find country there. So I'll go in and add United States. And I can see that there's OS version and I'll go and add iOS 8.0. And on the right hand side, I can see that I've built this filter containing two dimensions, country and OS version. I click apply and now I've got my new users on a daily aggregation showing me how many I've acquired coming from the United States and for a specific iOS version. If I want to see very quickly how many uh, I've acquired in the entire month, I can change my aggregation from mean to count. And now I can see that I have 4,411 users who I've acquired within this filter. For our second example, let's try and analyze the difficulty of my game. What I want to do is I want to try and understand which levels of my games are the hardest and which ones are the easiest. So what I can do is I'm able to use the Explore tool to now build a new query using the metric win percentage. So let's go ahead and do that. I can go again to the metric picker. This time, because I'm looking at level-based data, I'm focusing on progression events. So I can go to the category progression and find the metric win percentage and apply this metric. Great, now I'm seeing my overall win percentage across all of my levels for each day over the past 30 days. But I really wanna focus this down and split it into the two levels that are within my game. So now I'll go to the filter picker. This time I'm focusing on events and progression events. And I can see that I have two levels here, Masterpiece Mayhem and Jew Heist. So let's go and select the, both of those and click Apply. Now, because I've selected these two events within the filter picker, I now have the ability using splits to actually take this single line chart and split it up into two line charts. So let's go ahead and do that. On the top right hand corner, we have a functionality called split. I can click on the drop down and find the item progression times two. What this is going to do, it's now going to split my graph into the two progression metrics that I've chosen. There we go. I can see on the blue line, my win percentage for Masterpiece Mayhem, and on the green line, my win percentage for Jew Heist. Perfect. This is great what I'm seeing now. It's showing me how the win percentage is changing on a day-by-day -day basis. But I actually also want to see the mean win percentage for both of these levels for the entire 30 days. To do this, what I want to do is now I want to change the x-axis. So instead of looking at days, I just want to see the levels on the x-axis. Let's remove the split that we added before. 
And now what we can do is we can go to the group by dropdown and instead of change having this selected as time, we can change it to event. Now, as we can see, I've got Masterpiece Mayhem on the left-hand side and Jewel Heist on the right-hand side, two bar charts side by side, allowing me to very easily compare which level is higher than the other. Another great feature that we have in the export tool is the ability to save your custom queries. So let's go ahead and save a query. Right here on the screen, I've got the metric loaded retention for day one and day seven. And what I usually like to do is on a weekly basis, compare my retention against my new users. So let's go and add a comparison graph and it's selected as new users. What's cool is that if I hover over any graph, I can very quickly see the data for 25th of August here, day one, day seven, and the new users. Let's go ahead and save this query. On the top right hand corner, I can click on queries. Let's go and save. And now let's call this retention versus new users. I can see the metrics that have been saved, day one retention, day seven retention, and new users. If I were to add any filters, they would be shown in dimensions. And below that, I can select a time period. So we have several options here. You can select no specific time period. You can select a specific time period, which will take the date from the date picker within the export tool, or you can select a dynamic time period. For the purposes of this query, I want it to be dynamic, so I'm gonna select the last 30 days and click Save. Now, if I go to Queries, My Queries, I can see that my query is there. And then one thing to remember is that any query you save can be applied to any game within your portfolio. So this brings an end to the tutorial for the Explore tool. Thank you for watching. And by the way, there's a ton of resources on our documentation page, so please make sure to check it out to find out more information, not only about the Explore tool, but all of the other features within game analytics.